thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone have anything else to add? Um, I think when I first read that question, I was like, oh, guilt. Um, thinking about activism, I probably often think maybe a bit like what you were saying, how things can get in the way, or wondering, what's the best way to change the world? Uh, maybe I'd just rather like write a poem. But I think there's real power in stories, actually. I think stories can change the world. And we need people doing everything. So we need people shouting in, in politics and in all the different spaces, but I think we've got to do our thing the best we can and not let guilt get in the way because that doesn't help anything. Um, yeah, so I agree with everything you just said, but um, <laughs> to elaborate, um, the, other than like the whole, yeah, the guilt thing of like, if you're doing the arts, then you're not doing enough activism, but if you go on a baseline of you want to make things better, then I found that the arts is also a really good space to avoid burnout for people that are like super active and then it's like building bridges and building community is like you put arts out, you see it, you find your people, it's like oh let's let's talk, let's do shit. So yeah, in that sense I find it very important. Great, thank you. Um, and uh, what are the kind of issues um, based around gender at the moment that you're currently thinking about? Um, anything along those lines? I think really like thinking about my nieces and all these small women around me um, and girls and just really trying to be more aware of what I'm showing them. I guess like I'd put in the poem, but um, it makes me reflect a lot. And so I've got three sisters, one's here. Yay! Not the, mo not the mother of the <laughs> um, So yeah, there's lots of like women around me. So I've been reflecting a lot on my mum and sisters and then also the new women in our family and how we, what messages we're telling them. So I guess that's just a personal, re very real thing and seeing how it's so easy to say stuff without thinking it through and thinking about what impact that could have. So that's kind of loosely related. Um, yeah, I think um, I've got some work friends here, so they've heard me say all this before, <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to steal what we said that work. work. Um, I think a lot of times, um, like, girls, young girls growing up are told what not to do a lot with regards to, like, how to carry yourself, how to behave, how to behave in relationships, or how to behave just in general in society. And I don't think there's a lot of, like, but you should do this, you should be proud to take your space, you should be proud to act like this, you should be proud to act like that. It's just a lot of, like, oh, no, sorry, shouldn't do that, oh, can't take that space. And I think it's just very important that... Um, we don't do that anymore and <laughs> to be honest and um i think yeah with the next generation i i would want to encourage women to like just grow up and sort of take their own space be proud of their own decisions even if you know people make bad decisions that's okay let's teach people how to deal with those decisions rather than you know being like no you must never make them because then when the fallout does happen what what can you do you're not equipped for it in any way Take a completely different direction. <laughs> um, um, like one of the things that I love about um, just sort of like gender theory, gender studies in general, it's one of the very few truly interdisciplinary fields. Um, so you know, just like the big buzzwords now of like intersectionality, and we're considering race, and we're considering class, and all of that is great. Uh, but my big concern right now, and what I've been thinking about a lot, is that even within that, it's still getting a bit siloed from the sort of like political and economic structures that are enforcing these things. So, you know, it's like black women and black feminists have been talking about, yeah, we need to overlap gender, race and class, but um, we're living in a particular historic moment right now where this this format of the heterosexist neoliberal fucking bullshit is <laughs> making it really, really hard to fight on all those fronts without seeing the bigger oppressive umbrella that's making every single one of those elements even worse than it should be. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's not getting enough attention and we need to like have an even broader view mm -hmm. and make anything related to gender even more radical than what we're doing now. 
Great. Um, any questions from the audience at this point? Yeah? Hi. Um, so, like, in this, like, modern age where everybody thinks they know everything, how would you, <laughs> including me, how would you best describe why you are a feminist to someone who has, knows nothing about it at all? I want to like, the most concise way to, to say it to someone who, in a party, you're like, why are feminist? How would you feel about that? Well, who's asking the question? An arsehole. <laughs> 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 I, think, I think there is a really simple answer to this, and, like, apologies if this is not, like, you know, layered enough, but if anyone asks me that question, like, it's simply equality, like, that's literally it, like, shouldn't everyone, regardless as to who you are, what colour skin you are, what gender you are, like, anything, like, we should be equal, and I know that's, like, idealistic, you know, but that's honestly what I would say if anyone asked me, because I, as a woman, want the same rights as all the male friends that I have, and I don't yet, and it's bullshit. <laughs> anyone else want to add anything? Usually what I've, what I've been doing with these kind of questions is that um, I question them back to the point where like I corner them into admitting their shit. <laughs> so if like, somebody says like really sexist or racist joke, it's like, I, I don't get it. <laughs> why, why is that funny? No, I'm like, yeah, please mansplain it to me. Or like, you know, why explain it to me? Sure. And then you just like watch them bury themselves. <laughs> and then as soon as they get to that point, it's like, well, that's fucked up, and that's why I'm a feminist, thank you. Yes! <laughs> um, that kind of thing, though, has been something that I've been thinking about in terms of, um, so people I know, f who I've known for years, that maybe I don't know them anymore, but I know that in the past that they've not had certain views, and then now, they're suddenly like really conscious of stuff and aware when at the time in the past they weren't and I kind of wonder like what changed like how like I clearly I don't think I had much impact on them other than like telling them off or something um and then I'm sort of like I've it kind of came into my mind recently because I met someone and they said a few things and I was like, hold on, that's not okay. And then I was like, but have I actually done anything by saying that? And like, how do you actually get the, these people who I know now are kind of all right? <laughs> how, how did they get there? And like, I don't know if it's just about them eventually like listening to the world around them because and then just trying to keep saying what you want to say, I don't know, and, and like using our voices collectively to, yeah, to get people to understand, I guess, I don't know. Any more questions? Yeah? Yeah, uh, I want to ask something a little bit more personal. Uh, when uh, you write about experiences that have been very painful, how do you get to the point of sharing the poem with other people in a contained way. Because I was thinking that I've written things that are quite personal and they refer to difficult experiences, but whenever I read them, even at home, I like burst into tears or I like I feel very high emotion and I can never get to the point of like reading them and sharing them and the emotion being okay just to deliver them. Does anyone want to start with that? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I can say something. <laughs> but, um, for me, yeah, I've I've been in situations where um, I've kind of like been in workshops, and we've just written something and it's very raw, and then doing it on the spot. Like even then, I hadn't known that it's gonna like make me burst into tears, but it just happened. So I do think that definitely like. Yeah, you know, if you even there is a point where you might think, oh, okay, I, I can go and read this poem, but it's completely different when you actually get there, and then you don't know how it's going to affect you. So, not very helpful. But <laughs> <laughs> I think just giving it a lot of time, and there's no rush. Like you can leave that 
for a year or however long, like, and come back to it. And I think, yeah, and then just do other things that, yeah, and or even like, you could start slowly, like if you have other um, kind of uh, friends or people that you would like to share it with, you can kind of do that as a first step um, if you sort of because I do think that like for me I started writing out of catharsis so I do think it it's really important for me anyway to kind of express things like that and sometimes yeah I will take the risk and maybe end up crying <laughs> on stage <laughs> um, but yeah I think just doing it gradually and not rushing the process um, yeah, I think, to be honest, like, like, just safety is, like, the most important thing. Like, if I've ever had anything, like, really difficult or, you know, whatever, like, I personally will probably not perform it. For example, I write primarily for theatre, um, and I recently had a show on that was about obsessive compulsive disorder, and it was a one-woman show, and a lot of people said to me, oh, you know, you should have been in it, why weren't you in it? And it, and I was just like, it's not worth it, mate. Like, it's too close to home, it was very personal. And by getting someone else to do it who was an actor that I really admired and who was a friend of mine and she kind of, you know, we could talk in detail and I could say, oh, this is how I felt at this bit, or, you know, whatever. But it was still, it gave me enough distance to, you know, some, some things are just too much and it's not worth it. And then other things, you know, like Carmen was saying, in a year's time, you will be fine saying it and you know after a while these things like they just become stories and once you get to that stage where just like this is just a story that I tell that I'm very detached from and you can still kind of you've had that catharsis you grew about it and stuff but you're emotionally safe which I think is the most important thing. So, yeah. I agree I think yeah time and safety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and just knowing the space you're in like you know, if you're thinking of reading it at night, going first just to see what the vibe is like. And then. But yeah, having maybe backups if you're like, okay, maybe that one's not for today. Yeah. Or coming at it from a different angle and not being like, this is my story. Maybe experimenting with the ways that you write about it. Or just taking elements of it and bringing in some fiction or, yeah, just playing. Like you were saying, working your way up. Um, we can maybe take one more question, if anyone has one. <coughs> no? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Do you think we'll ever have gender equality in my lifetime? <laughs> 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 Should we just... I, yeah. Like, my, my mom's generation that you were speaking about, um, Ben. No, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, t I'm 40, 20 years ago, I would have never s spoken about Ben. Yeah. Uh, my mom would have been, don't speak about that. Yeah. And my grandma would be, don't say anything. But that, but that is precisely and why I do. But you see, my daughter ben, would yeah. be able one day to just go out there and maybe express, like, because um, I think we're still far from it. We see progress, but, I mean, you know, I'd like to, I hope. We get it. Do you think we will? We could do like a, a yes or no. Everyone, <laughs> 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 yes? We meet. I'm trying. I'm trying. We can try though, that's all we can do. We can try. So, are you here? Yes. <laughs> Okay, last question. Um, how do you guys deal with catcalling? Like, how do you react to it? I write, I write very angry tweets about it. <laughs> and then stew about it for some time, and then tell my boyfriend, and then get annoyed because he doesn't appreciate how annoying it is. None of that's a helpful way to deal with catcalling. That's what I've been doing. I haven't personally done it, but um, yeah, my reaction is either like ignore or like middle finger. <laughs> or tweet about it, um, but um, <coughs> somewhere online, really helpful. But um, there are you can kind of make your own. But there you can have these cards that kind of just say like why it's not okay, and then if you 
feel like safe and comfortable to do so, you can just like give that person, you know, just keep carry them around with you and like hand them out. So then, you know, you don't have to really interact, but you can just like let them know this is not okay. I just give a very sick top tip. Yeah. If you're feeling very brave, just turn around and go, sorry. And then leave it. Just don't say anything. Just leave it. And then if they say anything else, then walk away. Don't care. We're just going, sorry. And then they have to explain themselves. And if they don't, then they're across it. <laughs> Any more? I mean, because like the thing I, that actually pisses me off most about capitalizing is like the whole process it triggers of like me calculating everything about my surroundings. It's like, where am I? Where does the street look like? Is he small enough? Can I take him? <laughs> <laughs> but because also, like, I'm from a place where sexual harassment is rife, and it's like. But it's it's a very very dangerous situation. The whole time it's just a matter of calculating. Like women have been killed over like responding to catcalling. Um, so it's it's a tricky one, and I I'm very very weary of giving out like blanket advice um, about what to do in that situation. But it's like it's the thing you're going to do as a woman all the time, which is like constantly be aware of your bearings. But then there was an argument that was happening in the country as well as like, well it's gotten so bad because we were just inherently taught it's like ignoring, don't respond. Mm -hmm. And then the younger generation of women coming up was like, well it's because all of you were silent. Yeah. Now we're dealing with like worse variations of like, hey beautiful, do I want to fuck you? Like in a generation <laughs> it got very aggressive. So now some women are like, well, no I'm gonna respond, but that also has to be calculated and at the end of the day your safety has to come above everything else. Yeah, I just ignore awkwardly and wonder what I should have done. <laughs> 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 it's because it's so unexpected.